back with some questions for our older kids. Focus on the fourth and fifth commandments, right? The fourth commitment, fourth commandment, honor your father and mother. Uh, St. Paul points out it's the first commandment with a promise, right? When God first gave this, this commandment, he said, honor your father and mother so that you may have a long life in the land that the Lord your God will give you, All right? There's a promise there. So what, why does God give us this commandment? What is he protecting by this? Uh, he's protecting peace in the family, right? Children should honor our parents. And the corollary, the, the implication there is parents should be worthy of honor of their children and respect their children as well. So it's a two-way street, right? Kids honor parents. Parents honor and protect their kids. Uh, and it expands beyond just the household to kind of a general respect for authority. So if you think about it, if everybody walks around disrespecting authority, not following the rules, not paying attention to the people who are, who are legitimately in charge of us, whether they're teachers, daycare workers, uh, our bosses, police, elected officials, all that sort of stuff, if we just ignore all the rules, then we have anarchy and chaos, and none of our families are safe. Respect for authority is very important for peace in the world, and that begins at home. And the next commandment in here, the fifth commandment, uh, you shall not kill, right? Why does God give us this commandment? This one seems the most obvious commandment in the world, right? We need to outlaw killing, <laughs> right? Why does God give us this commandment? Because it shows us that in God's list of 10 things that he's going to give us rules about, his most important things in the world, one of those is we should respect and honor life from conception to natural death. And there's all sorts of issues along the way in there that we could get into in this. The catechism is going to tease some of those out, right? But ultimately, it's a respect for life in all of its forms. Now, a big question that a lot of people are going to ask is, well, you shall not kill. Like, what about soldiers in war? What about, like, uh, legitimate self-defense? Um, a better translation of that word kill would be murder. You shall not murder, right? Killing sometimes happens unintentionally uh, or sometimes happens intentionally in a, a scenario where it is actually good for you to kill, right? If someone is threatening your life and you can't get away and the only thing you can possibly do is kill them, then that might actually be morally, uh, you might be morally obligated to do that. And that's a good thing to protect yourself, right? That's very, very different from murder, which is you are no threat to me and I'm just going to eliminate your life, right? That is horrible. And that is what what God is, is calling out here, here is murdering the innocent. You shall not murder the innocent. Self-defense is okay. Defending your country is a good thing. Uh, all these sorts of things. There's some nuance to this that you need to kind of flesh out. And, and kids, you're great at picking up on, well, that doesn't make sense because what about this scenario? So talk about those things as a family uh, and figure out where do you think the lines on this commandment are and where do you think they aren't? And if you have any questions, you know, shoot me an email, grab me at mass. Uh, I'd love to talk to you more about it.